as we all know, uh, both the people in this conference and the one that preceded it, open source is awesome. You know, we all love it. It's great. It lets us share our work as consumers. It lets us uh, uh, focus on our, be more productive, focus on our core functionality, and not reinvent the wheel. Uh, and as a result, open source usage has exploded. We see open source everywhere. It's being used in pretty much any aspect of our being. Unfortunately, from a security perspective, open source is not in a great position. Uh, studies show that open source is less tested for security uh, compared to in-house software. Generally, the people that write to the open source components are usually less aware of security, less budgeted for security, may not have the time, don't, think, don't know how it would be applied. And the ones that consume it think of it as third-party software. They prioritize their own software testing versus testing the open source components. Um, at the same time, we're seeing the attackers are actually targeting open source uh, because it's very lucrative. You find one vulnerability, you have this code, many people are using it, you find one vulnerability, you have many different victims. Um, and we've seen many examples of this over the last sort of year or two. We've seen Heartbleed, Shellshock, Logjam, all these designer vulnerabilities, brand vulnerabilities uh, that are all very, very kind of high impact. Um, so I think we can safely say that open source does not equal secure. It doesn't equal insecure either, but the notion that because it's open, there's more eyes on it, more eyes on it and it doesn't have vulnerabilities is not true. That is not accurate. So all of this is talk about web servers and OpenSSL, but what we don't talk about a lot is third-party code. I mean, open source package modules in NPM, in Maven, and the likes, they're also awesome. They also make us more productive and help us focus on our core. Uh, and as a result, the use of those has also exploded, right? We see it in NPM stats, for instance, with about 200,000 packages and two and a half billion downloads every month. Um, and, you know, we see similar, very big stats from other repositories. And each of these dependencies, each of these modules that you pull in is a risk. It's a security risk in your system. Uh, if you look at an environment like Node, a typical application would have hundreds of dependencies. Usually most of those are not direct. You pull in a dozen or two into your application and they pull in a dozen or two each, and very quickly you get to hundreds, sometimes thousands of different dependencies. Do you know, when you look at these dependencies, whether for every single one of them, does it have vulnerab vulnerabilities? Do you know for every single contributor to every single dependency that you have, whether they've been compromised, whether they have malware on their machine that tries to modify the code to install a backdoor to your system? If that happens, would you know? Is that something you'd be aware of? And in fact, for that matter, do you know that every single contributor to every one of these different components is not malicious? I mean, there are bad actors out there. We're not sort of all just there for goodness. This is a very real problem. If you look at the vulnerability paths, uh, or kind of paths specifically, you see that on NPM, about 11% of packages carry known vulnerabilities. Usually it's not in their own code, but rather in the dependencies that they pull in with them. Um, and this is despite the fact that Node and Node modules are a very lightly researched field. If you look at a more mature research field like Java, you see that in Maven, about 59% of the known vulnerabilities are not fixed, not fixed at all. The 40% that are fixed, the mean time to repair, the average amount of time it takes to fix them is 400 days. Even the CVSS 10 ones, the ones where I can just blink and take over your server, uh, those still take 260 days, 65 days on average to fix. So this is before, by the way, the time it takes you to consume those modules. So my question to you is, do you have known vulnerabilities in your code? Do you even know? Do you track this? So we, we think this is a big problem. We gathered a team and we created a tool called SNCC, uh, which is a free tool that helps you find, fix, and monitor for known vulnerabilities in your code. To show you this tool, let me switch out of Keynote here and into presentation mode. So I'm going to demo this on a modified version of the colonizers application uh, that I just tweaked a little bit. I'm going to use SNCC, which I've previously installed, just sparing ourselves a few moments here, and I'm going to run SNCC test. I mean, I made these modifications. I don't write vulnerabilities, seriously. Uh, but uh, I have these third-party components, uh, and uh, you know, this talk or the stats make me concerned. So I'm going to run SNCC test on them and see what I find. Oh, well. Looks like I did find something. So I found five vulnerabilities, and I get a bunch of information on them. Um, so before I dig into those, though, you know, I've had some experience with static analysis, security tools. I've created a few. And I know that one of the big problems is false positives. There's lots of noise in this. These are probably not really issues, right? They're just you know, things to scare me, but they're not really a problem. Hi. Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to challenge me on that? You know, Let me so. try something. 
But okay. uh, first, let's get into the right mood. Oh, hold on. I can help with that. OK, that's better. So as an attacker, the first thing I'm going to do is to try to understand what is the technology stack that guys use. So for that, I, for, time st for sake of time, I already ran my fingerprint script. And it finds out that guys is using Node.js application with uh, API framework and multiple plugins. One of those plugins was the Bassmaster that in the past contained uh, vulnerable code. So I will try to trigger this uh, vulnerability and to find out if I can attack your server. Sure, go for it. So See if we get anything. <laughs> uh, so I'll go to the right directory. I already have this exploit ready. Um, OK. So I will trigger the exploit by running, uh, by sending a post request with well-crafted JSON. And the exploit will spawn a reverse shell from Guy's machine. So first, I will open my server to listen to the incoming connection. And we'll try to run the exploit. <laughs> Beauty of live demos. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what is it? Maybe the IP changed. Hold on. Bear with us. Yeah, I am now on 23. Going to just live, live demos. OK. <laughs> so you know, as Asaf pointed out, this is, this is a known vulnerability on Bassmaster. So an attacker would actually have access to it. It's likely that they would have an existing exploit. There's platforms like Metasploit that actually built those for penetration testers, for the good guys. But it just sort of demonstrates that an attacker could have access to those What's as well. That? 33? Uh, 23. OK, so I'll try to run the exploit again. <laughs> All right, great. So the exploit worked, and I got reverse shell from Guy's machine. So now I can pretty much run any command that I would like. Um, so for example, I can look at files or try to search for a setting file. Here I found some secret stuff. And I can also run uh, command shells from my code. So I will try to run something embarrassing here. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. embarrassing. I, I I'd agree with that. Okay, that worked. Okay, but guy, I cannot let you run this uh, server up in the wild, so I'm turning it off. <laughs> uh, let's find out what is the process. Right. So we're dead now. Okay. So, so guy, I think you need to reconsider. <laughs> yeah, I think I should. Um, okay. So maybe these are real problems after all. So let's take a look at the actual output here. So first of all, I was told that I've got a vulnerability on the Bassmaster plugin. Uh, it looks like I, I used it directly uh, and that I should upgrade it. So I'm using an outdated version of it, and because of that, I have this vulnerability that has since been fixed in Bassmaster. Uh, I also see an example of a vulnerability on Semver. In this case, I didn't actually install Semver. I installed read installed, which in turn pulled in Semver. So the guidance that Snake would give me is to upgrade the directed dependency read installed into this new version, and that would trigger the downstream upgrades that I need to. However, in some cases, like this one, this is the same Semver vulnerability pulled into my system through a different client. And in this case, this client does not have a newer version that would trigger the downstream upgrade of Semver. So I'm a little bit stuck. So let's, let's use the next step with Snake, which is Snake Protect. I'm going to run Snake Protect in interactive mode, dash I. It's going to rerun the test, and then it will guide me through the remediation process. So first of all, I see the Bassmaster example. It says, do I want to upgrade it? I'm going to upgrade it as instructed. This is just a lazy man's update to the package JSON file. I can also upgrade this one. And here's an example of that problem where I don't have the upgrade option. Uh, so for those cases, we maintain a database of patches, an open source database of patches for uh, these different vulnerabilities. We're not going to have a patch for every possible vulnerability, every possible permutation, but we'll build those up over time. Uh, and by patching, we would actually only modify, we'd modify the code of that downstream dependency uh, to make the minimum changes to actually make that vulnerability go away. So I'm going to patch this one and this one. And you know what? For this one, it's TAP. It's a testing tool. 
Uh, and while it's in my dependencies, I know that it doesn't make it to my production. So I'm just going to ignore it for now, and I will say, doesn't make it to production. Once I've gone through those vulnerabilities, uh, Snyk would also prompt me about whether I want to integrate this into my uh, uh, sort of regular ongoing flow. So it would ask whether I want to capture a snapshot of these dependencies so that we, Snyk, can alert you when new vulnerabilities are disclosed on these systems. I definitely want to do that. Um, I can add Snyk test to my package.json's test file. You can add it to your CI test however you want so that you don't ship with new known vulnerabilities. Uh, and then because I've applied a patch, I can also add Snyk protect without the dash i to apply the uh, chosen patches at install time. So this is useful because as I, uh, if I now package this module and post it and somebody installs it, as part of that installation process, that vulnerability will be patched. So now Snake is going to run through and uh, apply those and fix those vulnerabilities. Let me go back to the demo here, kind of rush through a bit. So first of all, I want to say, don't do this at home. <laughs> Hacking somebody else's servers is generally illegal, uh, and you, know, you shouldn't be trying that out. Also, I do want to point out that this is a modified version of the Colonizers app, and the one that we used here, like the real one, does not have these specific vulnerabilities. And I, that said, I'd like to repeat that question. Do you have known vulnerabilities in your code? Do you know if you are in this situation or not? If you don't, Here's my suggestion to you. First of all, use sneak test to first of all test your code to find out whether you have known vulnerabilities. If you, uh, you integrate this test into your CI system, so do this test constantly, continuously. Uh, if you have issues, use sneak protect i to fix them, upgrade when you can, patch when you cannot. And then monitor, you can run sneak monitor, or you do it through that interactive model to capture a snapshot of your dependencies so we can alert you to new ones that get disclosed. Uh, you can also require SNCC, this is still alpha-ish, but you can require SNCC in your code, so we would actually take that snapshot as your system boots up so you know you have the most up-to-date snapshot. Before I part, my kind of last message is to the ones that actually create those packages. So if you're a package owner, my question to you is, are you distributing vulnerabilities? When somebody consumes your module, they don't care whether you wrote a piece of code or whether you pulled in a dependency to do it. They've delegated their trust to you, and they use you as a package, as an entire entity. And if you have vulnerabilities in one of those dependencies, it might as well be vulnerabilities in your code. So it is your responsibility to not promote those vulnerabilities, to not distribute them. So if you own one of those package modules, I have a similar set of suggestions for you. Test them, make them a natural part of your flow, patch them if you need, or upgrade when you can, patch them to make them go away, make that a natural part of your post-install steps so that when somebody installs your module, they're not there and monitor for new ones. And we do have a badge that's still in alpha to help tell the world that you don't have any known vulnerabilities uh, and that you care and that they should care as well. SNCC has been in uh, private beta mode for a little while now. We had some awesome teams running it. We got great feedback. We improved the tool. And we're now launching it in open beta. Uh, it is still very much in beta. So I would ask you to please be vocal with your feedback and be forgiving with your judgment. Uh, and whenever you have issues or such, you can connect with us either through the email, through our Twitter account, or you can just run SNCC support in the command line, sort of guide you on how to open an issue. Um, it's only Node.js for now, but we are adding other packages. So stay tuned, follow us on Twitter to know when that happens. So that's basically it. You know, we all know open source is awesome, and if we make an effort and we uh, take it seriously, then we can also make it secure. Thank you. <laughs>